the surah, surah al-fatiha. So it's important for us to know why. The reason is, it is an instruction of the Almighty to repeat this surah in every unit of prayer. Not just in every prayer, in every unit of prayer. You know, we call it the raka'at, the units. So Fajr has so many units, Dhuhr has so many units, etc., etc. Even if they're voluntary units that you are uh, fulfilling for the sake of the Almighty, you need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required you to read a surah, a specific chapter. Everyone needs to know it off by heart, whether you understand it or not. And that is Surah Al-Fatiha. The opening surah, it starts off with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at this surah, it is actually amazing because it has in it just a supplication. But it's divided into two. And the Almighty explains that to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah Almighty says, that's called Hadith Qudsi. So a Hadith Qudsi is that Hadith where uh, the Almighty is speaking to us, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us what he has said, and it's not a verse of the Quran, but it's an explanation of the Prophet, peace be upon him, of what Allah has said. So he says, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِصْفَيْنِ I have divided Surah Al-Fatiha between myself and my worshipper, into two. Wow. Surah Al-Fatiha divided into two. My brothers, my sisters, when you are reading Surah Al-Fatiha, it's totally between you and Allah. Divided exactly half. So how? Many people might not understand it. So the hadith explains it. When my worshipper says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When my worshipper says, All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. I say, that means Allah says, my worshipper has praised me. Imagine Allah is so happy. You just praised Allah. And now uh, Allah is saying, wow, my worshipper has praised me. Allah is saying, my worshipper has praised me. Whenever you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, or others are saying it, or a billion people are saying it at the same time, Allah responds to all of them at the same time. When they say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, He says, and the angels are witness to this, my worshipper has praised me. Verse number one, you get a response. Verse number two, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now, who is my Lord? Who is the Lord of the worlds? He is the most beneficent, the most merciful. Ar-Rahman is a special mercy. Ar-Rahman is a, a, a common mercy, right? That Allah has upon all His creatures. And Ar-Rahim is a special mercy that Allah has for those who believe. So the hadith is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this mercy and he is the most merciful. The verse of the Quran is so beautiful. It has in it Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim as the, the next verse, the second verse, subhanAllah. As you open the Quran, people say, oh, this book has in it uh, so much of, you know, nowadays with this Islamophobia, people think the Quran is a book that makes people drift away from kindness. And yet the very second verse, Allah is saying, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. He is the most beneficent. And he responds to anyone who says that or who reads that verse that, Subhanallah, my worshipper, uh, the first one, he, my worshipper has praised me, Hamidani Abdi. My worshipper has declared my majesty, Majadani Abdi. He has declared my greatness. Amazing how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is responding to those who are saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim by saying, my worshipper, my worshipper has actually declared my greatness. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, when we read Surah Al-Fatiha, let's take it seriously. We move to the third verse. We're talking of supplication, but this is the build up to supplication. When you want to call out to Allah, first seek forgiveness. Make sure that you have sought forgiveness from all that which you've done that was evil, that which you know, that which you, which you don't know. Declare the greatness of Allah. Declare the fact that you are helpless. You are totally and solely dependent upon Allah. And ensure that you are humble. You, when you ask Allah, you, you are humble, softened. You know, don't just ask Allah like, uh, if you want, do it for me. And if you don't want, don't do it for me. That's the reason why when we call out to Allah, we are not allowed to say, Allah. We have to call out with conviction. You don't say, uh, uh, oh Allah, forgive me, inshallah. No, 
oh Allah forgive me and you stop there because you don't want it to, to connect it to whether Allah wants to do it or not. You desperately want it. You desperately want it. Ultimately, Allah does what he wants. So uh, the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, when you call out to Allah, don't say inshallah after that. If you were to say inshallah, it's a mistake because it's like someone saying, ah, if you want to give me, give me. If you don't want, I don't really need it. Astaghfirullah. I'm sure those of us who have said inshallah, when we say a dua, we don't do it intentionally. Some of us don't even know what it means. Or we haven't thought about what it means. So my brothers and sisters,